I'll see you later. And away she flies. Yuko bolts down the hole, her handbag trailing behind her like an awkward streamer. I guess all librarians are neurotic. Huh? Uh, never mind, I was just thinking that I've never met a librarian that can organize their time, no matter how good they are with their books. Oh, I know what you mean. Anika smiles in amusement. It wasn't meant to be a joke, but I must have reminded her of uh, some other librarian or something. I have to get back. Yeah, me too. I didn't realize it was this late. Thanks for letting me hang out with you. No problem. I was going to the dormitory right now anyway, so do you mind if I tag along? Okay. Anika sets off behind me, and I need to jog a little to reach her side. We walk through the gardens, eventually arriving in front of the dorm buildings. Man, you walk pretty fast, I'm used to this. Yeah, you managed to outpace me. Kinda regret saying that, but it has less to do with her pace than the fact that I'm conditioned is significantly worse than my fitness. Hanukkah's reaction is odd. I expected an awkward attempt to downplay her walking speed, but she just blushes while looking at her feet and smiling. Hanako... There. Silence. Hung... Hung there. Crap. In the air between us. That happens often when around Hanako, but feels slightly different than usual. After a few seconds, I try to break the silence. Here you go. See you in class tomorrow? Sure. Hanako waves a short goodbye before pushing her way through the dorm's door. I stand and look at them for a while before making my way to my own dormitory room. <sighs> and another passage of time. Chirping birds. Oh, what's the point in putting that there? Normally, this would be a good time to reflect upon the beauty of nature, but it's 6 a.m. Covering my head with a pillow, I slam my face into the mattress, hoping that the impact will send me instantly back to sleep. Futile. I toss and turn, but sleep won't return to me. I hate it when that happens. You wake up for no reason, and you can't go back to sleep. What's worse is when it happens in the middle of the night. Ah, right, nature, you've won. See, I'm getting up now. The lack of sleep weighs my mind down, and there's only remedy for this a night hearty breakfast. It would be nice to be the first person here, to be the first to dig into a piping hot meal of food to sit down as I desire. It would be nice, but even my exceptionally early start has put me behind the most diligent students. I guess there are quite a few people that have early starts here for one reason or another. A group of students in sports clothes huddle around one table, eagerly discussing game plans in between inhaling great gulps of food. Scattered around the hall are a number of blurry, bell and blur, probably suffering from the same alignment as myself, noisy birds. And of course, there are the people that actually enjoy getting up this early, the ones that with their bags stuffed with textbooks and completed homework. It's not hard to dis despise people like that, even more so when you're tired yourself. Picking out a familiar phrase from the thin crowd, I head towards the nearest table. Lily sits alone, delicately fingering her way around a small plate of eggs with a fork. It's almost a shame to interrupt her in her clockwork movements. I wonder if this is how a person zones out. Blind person zones out, simply moving in predetermined patterns learned over the years, just like how a sighted person would eat while reading a newspaper. I've never seen someone do that, eat while reading a newspaper. Good morning, Lily. I didn't expect you to be here this early. Oh, Vassal, you startled me. I didn't know you took breakfast this early. I know, this is an exception to the rule. I'd greatly prefer to be late to school than early to breakfast. Lily gives a sm small sigh and I attempted tardiness as I begin eating my food. It doesn't take long for her to last back to her previous mindless nibbling. Each short motion lacks energy, I suppose this is similar to letting her eyes wander while performing an ordinary chore. But after a few repetitions of the food, or find food, eat food cycle, Lily puts down her fork and dabs her little her lips with a napkin. Sal, do you mind if I ask you a question? Damn. 
All I wanted was a little food and about an hour, a few more hours of sleep. And nobody says, can I ask you a question for a simple question? For a simple... Sure. Do you think of Hanako as a friend? Yeah, it seems uh, like a leading question. I guess so. Why do you ask? No real reason. Oh, come on. There's always a reason to ask a question. I do have another question, though. Why is it that you think of her as a friend? This is well above my level. What is she expecting me... expecting from me? I don't really sure. I guess it's because she's a little different in the way she does with people. Deals with people. Yeah. Since I've known her, she hasn't really connected with anyone. She doesn't seem interested in other people, and I think... People are a little scared of her, b off by her appearance. Really? I thought that kind of thing was discouraged around here. Discriminating and such. Yeah, if I were to put it one way. She frowns her brow in thought. A move which makes me slightly anxious as if... as to... she... I'd say that you're a little naive. Naive? I'd be insulted if not for the slightly... Cynical grin on her face. I see. While well, Yomiko has a stronger sense of community compared to other schools, it's far from being free of conflict. Rules cannot remove human nature, after all, only suppress it. There's something I've noticed, actually. Just little things, like how certain people. cliches. avoid. clicks avoid each other in the hallways. It's not different than the other school, really. Even Lily Shizun should could be considered bitter rivals, even though the both of them are fairly like fairly accepting people. Well, at least for Misha, tinted Shizun does. Yeah. Who knows what exactly goes on with her f fingers behind those glasses? I guess you're right, but when I first came, everything was a bit of a shock. I kept on making mistakes, or at least thinking I was making mistakes, like when I first met and said, "I see to you." I don't know if it was that considered a rude or anything, so I tried to put it in the back of my mind, treating people any different, that kind of thing. So I didn't. I told myself that Hanako and you and everyone were just normal, and I tried to ignore the obvious. Talked to Hanako as if she were our only person, so we became friends. At least that's how I think it happened. But you know, I feel like I was just saying that something like that out loud, as if it took extra effort to think of Hanako or you or anyone as normal people. I don't think that's right. So, I think you're naive, but I also think you're a good person. It is perhaps one of the your better traits. I suppose I can take that as a compliment. Tell me, are you free tonight? What a w interesting question. If you don't count homework, then I'm free as a breeze. In that case, would you care to join myself and Hanako for tea? Uh, I don't really have much money for a minute, so going out isn't really... Oh, I didn't mean going out, just here, this evening. In classrooms in the evening? No, that's not what I meant. Hanako and I often use my room for tea parties together. Please feel free to drop by after dusk. Sure, I see no problem with that. What's your room number? 225, room 25 on the second floor. Okay, sure. Well then, I'd best be off. I have class representative duties to attend to, after all. Until this evening, Hassau. Yeah, catch you later. Hang on, was I just invited to the girls' room after hours? Is that even allowed? There is a curfew here, but I've never heard any rules about visitors to dorm rooms. Even still, this is enough to get my sleep-deprived brain a jumpstart. Add that to the lukewarm breakfast, you have one hell of a pick-me-up. I gradually go to class, still a little excited at the prospect of breaking the rules. I feel a little like a kid playing to sneak out his window at night. Well, maybe that's going a little too far, but when you compared an invitation to a party to six or so hours of lectures, I know which one wins. Misha and Shizun uh, do little to relieve my boredom either. For once, they seem to seem determined to actually complete Matao's assignment. Nevertheless, the day eventually winds to a close. I hurry back to my room to wash up and comb my hair. Thankful I don't run into Kenji. Before long, I leave the boys' dorms. 
Alright, I think I'll stop here. And I might go record something else. First, I think I got a drink. So I will see you guys later for some more Katawa shows you at some other point. What's today? I have no idea. It's Friday. Well, I probably weren't recording anything till next week. Either way, I shall see you guys later.